Hey guys, it's Dorian, and today I'm going to have a look at Nitrix Linux. This is one of the distros I've been wanting to review uh, for a while now, before I did Revenge OS, and uh, they came out with a new version, so I re-downloaded the new version, and I'm going to have a look at that now. So Nitrix was around before. It's based on Ubuntu, first of all, and it uses the unstable branch, so it gets a lot of the new stuff that isn't out yet. So it's kind of like a mix of Ubuntu with a semi-rolling release type feel to it. As for stability, doing it that way, I haven't used it extensively to, to see if there's any major issues, but Anyways, it, they were around before, and when Ubuntu switched from Upstart to SystemDM, they had some growing pains, and there were all kinds of issues at the time. Things were a little unstable, which I completely understand because I'm going through that kind of thing right now with the whole kernel patches that happened due to the Spectre and Meltdown things. It caused all kinds of problems, caused problems for VirtualBox and guest editions and yeah, anyways. So they're back now, loading it up here in a virtual machine. So I've got the ISO loaded up. I'm gonna fire it up full screen. And we've got this little basic bootloader here. Just out of curiosity, see what the switches are. Uh, just quiet splash. All right. So, boot it up. And it seems to be also suffering from the lack of boot splash. Oh, this is, this is not a boot splash. That feels like it was a separate little program they ran before firing up KDE, which is, there we go. Okay, so this is gonna be using a fairly recent kernel, so 4.15.5. Uh, let's just see, there's very narrow window borders here, kinda hard to, kinda hard to grab. It's like a one pixel wide Okay, well, anyways, so this is created by some UI designers, and it's very pretty to look at. They also have what's called Nomad, which they add on to the KDE desktop, and you get things like this here. You got your Nomad networks and your Nomad notifications, uh, optical disk with file manager. So you get the, this little extra panel here, which is neat. Uh, the cool thing too about if if you're coming from Ubuntu is you can still use apt commands, right? And if you look in the list here, they've got their own repos, Ubuntu's, and I just wait for it to finish here. You can see as it's scrolling by, it's using a mix of Ubuntu's Xenial, so 16.04, and uh, Bionic. So, and then Unstable. So it's using quite a bit here, uh, different versions of Ubuntu, whether that causes any conflicts, probably not because uh, you'll always end up with the latest version of whatever package. Now, if a package requires a dependency that isn't up to date, that's, I don't know, like, like I said, I haven't uh, played with it too much here, but onto the desktop. It's your basic KDE, uh, Dolphin's your file manager, Kate, it's got Chromium built in. It doesn't have a whole ton of software. It's got your music player, uh, your desktop customizers here, uh, VLCs installed, screenshot utility, and the software center looks to be their own, see Nomad software center here. But I don't know if I like it because, like, I, I don't know what these do. So you've got this icon, and this icon. If you hover, it doesn't tell you what it is. And if you click on it, you get a blank list. So this might be things you've installed. I'm not sure. I will eventually install this and see how it goes on a VM. 
probably won't do it on hardware. Maybe I will. I'm not sure. But looking at this, like I'll do in what is this? There's no, I can't right click, can't click or anything. I can just hit get, which doesn't do anything. So I'm a little confused. Oh, there we go. So it's downloading. Okay. So this is like your, your tasks that are currently going. Okay, and now it's done, and now it should be here. Not, I, I'm not even sure what I just downloaded. I picked something random, and that's that's the problem. I, I don't know what these are. I don't know how to get information on, on them. But so that's a little odd. But if you're comfortable with the terminal, then you know you could just do uh, sudo apt install whichever and pretty much anything that's in the ubuntu repos you'll be able to get so if you're if you're already using a system you already use certain pieces of software then you know what to get so and then your system settings are basically your typical kde settings and they've got some customization of course that they've done themselves if you go to workspace theme look and feel They've got Nomad selected, which is the theme they've created here, which is, it's nice, it's light, literally light, it's very white. And it's got some nice colors here. If you open up Dolphin here, you can see a little more, some of the icons and whatnot. That's kind of neat. And they've got a few wallpapers. Configure desktop. They've got some nice things here. I'm, I'm assuming they've done themselves especially obviously the branded ones. So yeah, nice colorful wallpapers, All right? So now this is KDE, of course. So if you're looking at memory usage, so right now it's using about a gig. I've opened and closed a few things, but I mean, typically for KDE, you're looking at between 550 megs to 900 megs usage anyways, just booting up. If I were to guess, this one's probably between six and 700, you know, just right around the middle there. I'm curious because my fan has spun up, which means high CPU usage, and it could be the compositor. That's what I'm suspecting. Uh, CPU, no, it's the software center. Okay, so it's out looking for updates right now. So uh, I'm, I'm assuming you'll get notifications here saying that you get updates. Uh, other than that, it's it's fairly basic. I mean, it's, it's beautiful to look at. It's got everything you need to get started out of the box. Cases Guard is the KDE system monitor. And the, the, the themes play well through everything here. The, the colors, very nice. System load, that looks a little funny. I don't know what's going on there with the graphics. Now, you might have to be in HD to see, but there's all this little pixelated background here. I'm not sure what that is. It could just be a virtual box issue. All right, and you could see when I did the resize that it resized on its own. So it very, very likely has the open box, uh, only office, the, not the open box, sorry, the virtual box guest editions installed. And they went with Calamaris, Calamari, Calamaras for their installer, which I've looked into as well myself personally, because Ubiquity is a little bit picky. Don't mind my phone. <clears throat> Ubiquity is a little uh, bit of a pain to set up and the Calamari's installer doesn't care what OS you're using. It's generic, it's got some modules that you can choose to use for your installation. So it's got all your basic installation. Manjaro uses this, I believe, actually. 
I started using this a while ago. And yeah, partitioning, just erase. So you get a before and after. If you were to do your, your manual, oh, I think it just crashed on me. I guess it didn't like going back and forth. Let's try that again. Back and forth. Weird. Okay, anyways. So if you have something on here already, it would show what it is right now. And right now it's blank. And then it's automatically choosing to put a 8.8 gig swap. And then you have a choice to where you want to put your bootloader. And then you have this. And what I like about Calamari's, if you do something dumb like this, it'll actually show you that it's invalid. Not all installers do that. And log in automatically. No, let's not do that. And install. And there we go. So now it's installing. I'll just let that go. And then I will get back to you. All right, so we're all done now, and I didn't make note of the time when I started, but uh, it was maybe three three to five minutes. And again, it looks like it, it stalls for a while, but it doesn't. Uh, so you have the option restart now and then done. Uh, let's not restart now because there's one more thing I want to show. When you shut down, say shut down see if it does it again here so you get your little boot splash and then it kind of just hangs here now I was forcing the machine to shut down before all you see is the little white cursor line uh, what's meant to be showed right now usually on a live distribution is to remove the disk from the drive and hit enter and for some reason you can't see it right now but if you hit enter oh there we go so yeah if you're frozen on that image, just hit enter. So now the drive has been removed, the ISO, and we'll boot up. Okay, well, that's not too, too bad. I will say that there are some issues in general, not with Nitrix, with the distros using the latest Ubuntu stuff, the Bionic stuff, and using the newer kernel. Ubuntu, or sorry, Canonical has been raving that they have these new system D things to make boots even faster, but I've actually found it to be the complete opposite and boots are taking way longer. But this was, uh, this took a little longer, uh, but it wasn't that bad. It was, it was actually pretty decent. And of course, if you're running on an SSD, it'll be better as well. So we'll log in here. into KDE. I wish you could turn this off, but I know that KDE has a loading screen and they've just made their own version of it. Normally it has the different icons, the disk and the network and all those things that light up as it boots up. But yeah, it still takes a second for it to, to pop up, but that's okay. Uh, like I said, the new kernel, the new Bionic Beaver stuff from uh, Ubuntu 18.04 does make things run a little slower. Hopefully that stuff is all optimized before, by the time the LTS actually comes out. There's, there's going to be glitches, it's expected. So yeah, pretty basic. Like I said, it's nice. It's a little bit of a resource hog. Um, but I normally have no problems running virtual machines and having my fan fire up like that. And it also never happens in any other distro that I load up. The only other one that I had that happen with was Revenge OS. And that's just because the compositor was acting up, which tends to happen in a virtual machine. Virtual machines don't run things perfectly. I will probably try this in a hardware bare metal environment and see how that goes. But for now, it's okay. It's, uh, 
like I said, if, if you want something very pretty to look at, then Nitrix is definitely one of the prettiest. As for usability and included software, it's uh, it needs a better software manager, even if they just use Synaptic, which would give you way more information than their software center. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll see about doing a part two on hardware if there's interest in it, but that's Nitrix in a nutshell. So as always, follow me over on Twitter at Dorian.slash. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Till next time, guys.